Grand Canyon National Park has been on my bucket list for I don't know how long. Neither one of us have ever been, and I am super excited to be here. Awesome. Photo op. So our grand plans in the Grand Canyon have kind of went kaput. Cause we're classy. Headed to a brewery. Choo choo! Williams is home to two breweries. The first brewery that we visited was historic. It's been around since 2013, so I guess that makes it historic in terms of the craft beer scene. Historic is based in Flagstaff, so the Williams location is more of a taproom. They serve some great food and also have a patio that is person and dog friendly. If you've been following the channel, you know that we love pickle beers. Well, a precursor to a pickle beer is a cucumber beer, and Historic had an amazing one called Undercover Cucumber. Yeah, say that fast three times. I don't think so. Speaking of history, the Grand Canyon Railway has been taking passengers to the Grand Canyon since the early 1900s. Okay. Picking up our tickets for tomorrow. All the way outside near the parking lot, there will be a red caboose. Okay. That's where the Wild West show is in the morning from 9 to 9.15. Oh. They have a little shootout. Okay. okay. I was pretty excited for the Western show. But not surprisingly, the Western show isn't historically accurate. It was entertaining, especially for the kids, but the train needs to invest in some new speakers. The sound was horrible, and it reminded me of the teacher from Charlie Brown. The cost to ride the train depends on what class of tickets you get. And you can mix and match tickets, meaning that you don't have to ride the same class on the way to the Grand Canyon as you ride on the way back. We chose to ride in the cheapest seats, the Pullman class, on the way to the Grand Canyon. The rail car isn't air conditioned, but the windows opened, which was perfect because the high temps that day were in the 70s. There it is. There are three things you need to know about the train. Number one is that it is slow. It takes over two hours to get to the Grand Canyon on the train. And you can drive that same distance in about an hour. And that leads into number two. It doesn't leave much time for sightseeing. Once you have arrived, you only have about three hours before you have to board to head back to Williams. Three, after boarding, it's kind of boring. I agree, there's just a lot of scrub and not much to look at except right as you're getting to the Grand Canyon. There's a musician who plays about three songs for a total of 15 minutes, but the rest of the time you're left to do whatever. Okay, we just got off the train and we are headed to the Bird Camp Visitor Center to further plan 
our little three-hour window on what to do in the Grand Canyon. We're at the south rim of the Grand Canyon and we are doing the Trail of Time. Which is this 2.8 mile trail along the rim which represents a geologic timeline. Each step walked on the timeline represents one million years of the Grand Canyon's geologic history. Ten million years. Every meter or large step is marked with a penny, and there are markers along the way marked in millions of years. You know, you think you know what to expect at the Grand Canyon because you've seen pictures that friends have posted and just on the internet, but this is something that you just have to experience in person. This video will never do any of this justice. The trail includes samples of rocks that would have been formed during some of the relevant time periods. Oh, schist. I'm, I'm excited to get into more of the intricacies, I guess. Right. I'm not any sort of geology expert at all, and what this makes me want to do is go back and sort of digest and read more about the formation of the Grand Canyon and, and you the know rocks. what that means for you people? She's going to give you a video and she's going to do this. I'm going to talk with my hands and do some ex explaining. The Visitor Center explains that the Grand Canyon was formed in 14 major steps, the last several of which involve lava dams eroded by the Colorado River. Looking at this much Colorado River. Can you see it through there? And it's surprisingly not that busy. And the weather is great. We wore jeans and brought hoodies, but I've already shed Dis disrobed my hoodie so when we booked the train i was a little bit concerned that having about three three and a half hours at the grand canyon wouldn't be long enough time but i felt like this was enough time to sort of get our bearings and figure out what we want to do next on our next visit we ended up walking around around five miles on the rim trail and it took us about three hours when we stopped and had lunch as well yeah, and now we're going to get ready and get back on the train. This time we've got first class, baby. Woohoo, I'm tired. <laughs> I'm tired too. We're going to take a nap. <laughs> yeah. We Dog free nap. Yeah, we booked it thinking, okay, we can have some drinks and some beer on the train back. But I think we both just want to go to sleep. <laughs> I want a treat. What's your treat going to be? I don't know yet. Oh, okay. Well... Let's go board it. Woo hoo. Choo choo. choo. Our ride back did feature comfier seats, some quote unquote free food. I'm not sure if it was worth $50 or so extra, and slightly better musical numbers. And then there was the robbery. All right. So let's take that down the middle, roll it up, put it in your hat, your glasses, your, your ear. I did not, not understand anything. Your shoes, your socks, your crack. Man, not that crack, your chair crack. Uh, have fun with the robbery. Don't, don't, don't just give it to them. Make it work for them. Okay. Or make them work for it. Have fun. Scared of interaction.
<laughs> you just want to be left alone. <laughs> you don't want to be robbed. Hey, Rob. She just let me give you money over the internet and leave me alone. <laughs> Yes, you guys are safe. What about you two? Right there. Where is it? Right there. Right there. Thanks for making it too easy. <laughs> <laughs> right. Now, if you're going to take that, let me get right in the hills. Go ahead. Oh, hey, hey, human. Casey, they have photo opportunities here. Every second of every day with you seems to be a photo opportunity. Whether I'm on the toilet, sleep, have spinach in my teeth. Yes, but we can win prizes here. That is not true. It says we can win prizes. Wow. <laughs> what is the prize? I don't know, but I love being a tourist and just annoying the crap out of you. <laughs> <laughs> I actually liked Williams quite a bit. Its population is only about 3,000 people, so it's largely a tourist town. There's dozens and dozens of old school one-story motels located in the town, and it was fun just to walk around and see them. Route 66, or Route 66, depending on where you're from, passes through Williams, and not surprisingly, there's a ton of Route 66 memorabilia on the town. The best we found was an old Union Oil gas station that is now Pete's Gas Station Museum. also really embraces its western heritage. Most bars are saloons and there was this place called the Wild West Junction where we got to do more photo ops. What are you in for? think so. We're good. Have Thank you. On our second day going into the Grand Canyon, we decided to hike part of the South Kaibab Trail, which actually goes down into the canyon. You have to take one of these orange buses from the parking lot to get to the trailhead. We're going down there, taking the zigzag wigwam. <laughs> okay, That's I don't think... technical term. I don't think that's politically correct. What's it called? Zigzag Blue Way. So we're on the Kebab Trail and just wanted to update you guys on what's been going on the past few days. So on Saturday, when we were still in Mesa, I started getting a bunch of floaters in my left eye. And if you don't know what a floater is, it's like little black dots that sort of float around. But I also had like some smoky monster stuff going on in my left eye as well. And I'm thinking, that's not right. Because I've had some mild floaters before, but this was a little different. So on Sunday, we actually drove from Mesa to Williams got to our campground. Still wasn't cleared up, still having the floaters. So first thing Monday morning, we called around trying to get into an optometrist, ophthalmologist, and the closest one that could get us in was the next day, first thing Tuesday morning in Flagstaff. In, in Flagstaff. So we drove to Flagstaff at 8 a.m and by nine o'clock I knew that I had a torn retina and that I probably needed to do something with it very soon. Well, the optometrist, ophthalmologist office that I was at 
didn't do that sort of thing. So we had to call around yet again and drive all the way to Prescott, which is about an hour and 45 minutes to see a retina specialist, an ophthalmologist, who could see what actually needed to be done. And to make a long story short, by one or two o'clock in the afternoon, they said, yes, you indeed do have actually a couple of tears in your retina, but they were able to use a laser to basically kind of laser it shut and sent me on my way. So that's the explanation for these really awesome glasses that I have on because my vision is still really kind of jacked up in that left eye. Um, it'll clear up eventually, but I'm not really seeing the best. And they said that if she would have waited 48 more hours, that the outcome would have been vastly different. Yeah, so it could have easily gone from just a tear in the retina to a full detachment. So I feel lucky in some ways, but I also think it was, you know, a learning experience for us in a few different ways. The first of which is that this was the first time that since we've been full time where one of us had kind of a medical emergency. You know, and it's already stressful enough when you have something go wrong with your health, but then when you're kind of in an unfamiliar city and you're having to call around to find somebody who can help you, that just sort of adds to the stress. Despite all the driving, uh, it was actually a pretty smooth experience. I mean, Lana was super stressed and she was a little bit short about it. I tried to calm her down and we got everything taken care of. I mean, from eight to one, that was our time window from diagnosis to surgery to out the door. And I consider that a very good outcome. <laughs> I do too. You know, this also teaches you a lesson about flexibility. You never know what's gonna happen on the road. Your RV could break down, your wife could break down, your dog could <laughs> break down, something's gonna happen. And so you need to be flexible. And that brings up a good point about, you know, the adventures that you're gonna do. You need to check your refund policies um, before you book something. And Lana's very good about that because you never know what's gonna happen. We were going to do a helicopter tour of the Grand Canyon. Um, but since Lana can't see very well still, it just didn't seem to be worth the money. Yeah, the ophthalmologist gave me the go ahead to do anything that we had planned, but we're gonna spend like 700 bucks on a helicopter ride. And when my vision is still kind of impaired, <laughs> I just didn't really want to do that and not be able to fully appreciate it. And we had checked ahead of time to see what the cancellation policy was. It was 48 hours and we were good to go, so we were able to cancel that and not lose our $700. So that is a very valuable lesson as well. Um, we didn't have to learn it the hard way, which is great. And, you know, we're back on track. We're doing a hike today. And yeah, the helicopter ride was kind of my bucket list. But you know what? We're in the Grand Canyon. Everything's like a bucket list here. Kaibab Trail drops about 2,000 feet over three miles to Skeleton Point. We decided to do about half of that. We're at the turnaround point. Um, Cedar Ridge on the Kebab Trail. We're not gonna go all the way down to Skeleton Point because we gotta go up. Yep. And we have other things we need to do today, like take a nap. Okay. Okay, so we gotta go all the way up there. Oh, let's see, it's 1116. We'll see what time it is when we get to the top. It's just 
the altitude. That's what I'm blaming it on, the altitude. So on the way down, it's called Uwa. On the way back, it's called Point. <laughs> yeah, yeah, something like that. We've got a nice little reprieve here where the incline's only two or three degrees instead of like 18,000. So it took an hour and 10 minutes to come back up 1.5 miles. I consider that a really good time for us because we like to lolly and take pictures and, and catch our breath. stop to breathe, <laughs> things like that. We did beat some people up, so they owe us a beer. Yeah, we but just... they're like 68 years old, and so I think they deserve a beer for... Even trying. Yes. up visiting the other brewery in Williams Grand Canyon Brewing on a different day. The place has four locations including Kingman, Page, and Flagstaff. We both had this prickly pear wheat that was quite tasty. We also wanted to tell you a little bit about the RV park that we were staying at in Williams, Railside RV Ranch. As its name suggests, the park is located right by the train tracks, but the train only goes by a couple of times a day, so the noise isn't that bad. The RV park has been around for 30 years, and I really liked it a lot, primarily because it is very dog friendly. In addition to a dedicated dog park where we could run Earl and Earlene, they even have a pet wash station. We took advantage of the weekly rate and paid $427 for eight nights with taxes and fees. We are in the Kaibab National Forest today. We're in the Buckskinner Park in Williams. It's just a little bit south of Williams and it's part of the National Forest. We couldn't do some things that we wanted to do in Williams. We wanted to bike the Grand Canyon. We also wanted to do the helicopter ride. And unfortunately, we spent most of yesterday driving all the way down to Peoria, Arizona which is a suburb of Phoenix. It was about a two and a half hour drive one way to see the ophthalmologist. That's where he happened to be having his office hours that particular day. It turns out that my laser surgery was not successful and we're gonna have to go back to the Phoenix area to have further surgery on my eye in a couple of days. It's a lot more invasive. So our grand plans in the Grand Canyon have kind of went kaput and we you are know, going back in time. Yeah, we're going, we're going to stay in the exact same spot at the exact same RV park that we did before. Primrose Estates mobile home park and RV whatnot. <laughs> and we did that just because we know it, we're comfortable there. It was easy to book. It was easy to book. If all goes well, we'll be there for about 10 days and then sort of restart our travel plans. But the surgery that I'm having, they're basically going to put a little gas bubble in my eye and then do further laser surgery on it. And there are travel restrictions in terms of elevation because you've got a gas bubble in your eye. So you know, we're pretty much stuck in the Phoenix area for the initial 10 days or so after surgery. So, you know, it is what it is. I'm bummed, but. So far we've been able to rearrange our travel plans 
We just are on a 10 day delay and that's okay because life throws you curveballs and you just gotta swing at them. If you can see them. <laughs> <laughs> so the bottom line is we have a lot more bucket list items to check off around Grand Canyon and Williams. So, you know, we'll probably be back in the area or I don't know, maybe we go to the West Rim or North Rim or something. But that is gonna wrap up our time here. Like and subscribe, get it? Like and, and subscribe. And remember, whether you're on the road or on the web, stay, stay classy. classy. Cheers. Woohoo! No, no. I what? didn't do woo woo. I was doing a <laughs> choo choo train. Oh, okay. Woohoo! Choo choo. Okay, one more time. Music, they're 68. That's. <laughs> I was gonna just say 60 and I think they're older than that. They're so that in their was 70. So the eight was the first number that I thought of afterwards. <laughs> so that was oh, how I came up with that. Somebody's oxygen deprived. Uh -huh. Yeah. Anyway, good hike, beautiful views, busy trail, lots of switchbacks. Now I'm ready to go have some lunch. Yeah, we're gonna hit one more stop and then we're gonna go have picnic lunch back at the visitor center. Hi. Hi. He's itty bitty. He looks fake. You fake? You fake? Don't let him bite you. Oh, no, he moved. <laughs> oh, he's bobbing. Are you bobbing? What? Don't touch him. Don't touch him. Don't touch him. Oh. <laughs> oh. We hope you guys enjoyed this video about Williams and Grand Canyon National Park. If you like this video, hit the like button and consider subscribing to the channel. And remember, whether you're on the road or on the web, stay classy. Cheers. Cheers.